I, don't, I don't know if you've seen various videos about me. Uh, typically, deep fakes. Uh, mm. They carry and lip sync and create a AI uh, advertisement for products. I don't know anything about it. And I'm very sure that you've seen what uh, the American President Donald Trump AI generated a picture of, of him uh, as a new pope. Uh, <laughs> and these are the dual potentials of, uh, of AI, the capacity to be able to uh, create uh, models and things that are uh, not as real as, uh, as, it, as one would expect. So there are deep fix, issues of misinformation, uh, algorithm biases, right. and how they have been used to manipulate elections, manipulate policies, manipulate governance, mm -hmm. or also get into the heads of uh on a zooming uh, public. And so uh, this growing co concern is really detrimental to our politics, our mm -hmm. governance, and mm -hmm. our society. Are there are specific steps that you believe uh, this government should take to mitigate this risk that uh, and ensure that AI benefits and not bring down our society? I think first it's in our policy. We need a comprehensive national AI policy. I know that... You know, the Federal Ministry of Innovation, Communications and Digital Economy um, are definitely working on a couple of, you know, working on a couple of um, solutions in that regard. But we definitely need a strategic, comprehensive national AI policy that guides, you know, and provides some, some type of, um, that provides some type of guidance for how AI is used within the context of, of Nigeria. Uh, the second point is the conversation around big tech accountability um, and the importance of, you know, w you know, um, engaging with the big tech corporate, you know, organizations on the importance of data privacy, on the importance of data governance, on the importance of, you know, data policy and on the importance of ensuring, you know, that the country would like to would, needs to maintain its, you know, data sovereignty. It is a non-negotiable, you know, subject matter, and it's a conversation that needs to be um, that needs to happen in such a way that we do not throw away, you know, foreign direct investment in one on one hand, and we also do not compromise the country's uh, citizens' data privacy and and um, you know <clears throat> data privacy and and data um, usage of our uh, and the use of are uh, people's you know personal data are human jobs at risk <laughs> i think i think that's a very that's a subject that i like to address very often i like to say that the person it is not ai that will take your job as a human being it is the person that knows ai that will take your job there is absolutely no way that artificial intelligence can replace Im the emotional intelligence, critical thinking, and creative ability of a human being. Mm. I've done a keynote at the global, you know, at the global AI summit in Saudi Arabia, that was titled "How to Maintain Human Self Confidence When Machines Appear to Be Better." The truth is that even robots themselves de depend on the human cap on human capability to eff efficiently and effectively function. I think that while individuals, rather than individuals worrying so much about how AI will take their jobs, I think it's important to build capacity in the area, in understanding, you know, basic use of AI mm -hmm. in a way that makes you relevant and a little more bit effective, above board. faster. Correct. Yeah. And then we, it's also important that individuals do, especially journalists, do not outsource their critical thinking to artificial intelligence. That's going to be dangerous because you see a lot of you see a lot of articles online today, and you can almost feel like this is such a robotic material. There's no way a human being wrote this article because if a journalist sat down to write, you can feel the emotional connection yeah. and the human angle in that material. So I don't think AI would take our jobs. I think I think AI will automate tasks. It will make things a lot more efficient and better. But as AI evolves, human capability would also evolve. And the people that are constantly reinventing themselves mm. to understand the, ram the varying ramifications of AI. I mean, there are so many areas that AI can't even control. AI ethics, AI engineering, you know, data modeling, data labeling. These are things that human beings need to do that AI can do for us. And I think we need to focus our energies more on how do we train our people to respond 
to the you know rapid evolution of artificial mm. intelligence. Let me yeah. mean, So one thing that uh, people might worry about in governance politics in Nigeria is uh, our elections. Mm -hmm. Our elections, as a lot of the time, have been short of being anything. It's too far away from reality. Mm -hmm. um, can AI help us? In many ways. For our elections. In many ways, but we also know that the the uh, politicians always know how to find their way around. You know the way that the, the only... The only time Nigerian politicians respond very fast to anything is when it affects them. <laughs> when it affects them. If they don't feel that this thing, oh, you're talking about children that there's no, you're talking about primary schools that are no chairs. It doesn't affect them. Let something touch their politics and see how they're going to leave everything and res resume in the yellow chambers very quickly to address it. We need this country for Nigeria to thrive, we need statesmen, not politicians. Statesmen in the political arena who understand the balance of power and the need to respond to the needs, yearnings, and aspirations of our people. You know, it is extremely crucial that we don't allow brigands, you know, criminals, uh, men of questionable character to get into our politics. Mm. But you yourself talked about, you know, the the... The 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 collegiate the collegiate you know selection selection process that allows only a few people to get very close to you know the the, the points where you now have to choose out of what is available. So you know what they say about when the desirable is not available, the available <laughs> becomes, becomes the, the desirable. desirable. So we should have hope. AI can help us with our elections. Absolutely, in many ways, and we're gonna. We definitely are working around a number of things. We're definitely working around. We, I mean, we 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 attempted building a, mo a mobile app in 2023 elections that could help us, you know, fact check, you know, fake news and all of that. It's something that we're definitely working to scale now, and ensuring that you know. Um, but beyond even fake news, we need accuracy in the electoral in the electoral process. We need an electoral process that is so. That is so. Um, that is so. Um, I don't want to call it fireproof. I'm trying to find the right word now. That is so. That is so difficult to tamper with, because of how efficient the technology has been built. Mm. Again, some of these technologies would only survive if they are built outside this country, because if you also build them in this country and they are subject to the approvals and the you know, um, the regulations of certain institutions that are going to be accountable to the same people in government that you are trying to check. You know, it's going to be, it's almost going to be an effort in futility.